Hello, hello, my dearest class. Hello, dear, dear teacher. Ivan, hello. Hello, Glenda. Welcome. Last day. Ivan, how you doing? How was your day today? Oh, good, bro. Relax. Well, that's good. That's good. Are you just going? Are you just doing school right now, or are you working and doing school? I finished the the college. Okay, that's nice, man. That's nice. So now just. Yes looking for money. You have Excuse to do me. it. Excuse me. Good evening, teacher. Hello. Good evening, Glenda. Hello. Yes. I, I couldn't active the phone. The oh, okay. Microphone. Yes. Ah, when I, when I said hello, Glenda, and, and you yes. left me, me dejó en visto. Uh, excuse me. Excuse me. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I completely understand. <laughs> Thank, thank you, Glenda. Thank you. I, I, I am I am trying to, to learn uh, how to use the chat because I, I, I don't know much about technology. Okay, well, that's always good. That is very good. <laughs> yes. Thank you, teacher. All right, all right, Glenda. Guille, welcome. Uh, okay, thank you, teacher. I'm here. Good ready. to see you. Good to hey. see you. And re come on, ready. <laughs> yeah, uh, good to see you, uh, teacher. And I finally complete the. I completed the the platform and the final exam. Nice, yeah. nice to hear that, Giga. Nice to hear that. Yes, yeah, thank you, teacher. All right. All right, all right. And are you guys ready for the next module? Are you guys gonna take the next module? Yes. Yes, ready. ready. All right, good to hear. Hello, hello, Melissa. Welcome and good evening. We're gonna give our Paco, hello Paco. We're gonna give our classmates a few evening. more minutes. Good evening, good evening, sir. They haven't given a, a date for the start yet, right? Um, I believe they did. Uh, let me see. I saw something like February 22. They're really, that we, uh, yeah, they're really, really trying to get it on February 22nd. Okay. Really, yeah, really trying. We'll, we will have uh, four days off. Four days off, I believe so. Would well, we should. <laughs> it's, it's always good. It's always good. Let me see here. Let me see. Uh, we finished today and then you have 19, 20, 21. Well, no, three, three, because it's the 19, 20, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and then Monday we are due oh. to start. So only three days. Well, there right. is no day off. The same. Yeah. yeah, it's the same three days. It's well, in the schedule. I hope, I hope it does start that way. What happens is that if it starts a little bit later, then the dates have to move and it becomes a little bit more complicated for, uh, for administration, mostly. Yeah. All right, and let me see here. Let me see, yeah. M Melissa, hello, can you hear me now? Hello, hello, welcome. 
All right, good to see you, good to see you. Let me see. I'm trying to see if I, I have anything. I think that for us, we're pretty much set. Let me see here. Let me move. Give me one moment. Sorry, guys. Sorry, I had to. A little sneeze. Just double checking on the platform. Is everybody good? Did everybody manage to complete the platform today? Remember, you have till midnight tonight. Everybody good? Yeah. All right. Was the final exam hard? Mm, not, not so much. Not it so wasn't much. so hard. It wasn't so so hard as the the, the previous ones. Okay. All right. So it just gets easier, right? Well, yeah. that's good. That's good. All right. Let me see here. I was looking for. Well, I don't think we could. Let me see. I think we're I think we're due to start. I think we gave I think that's it. I think that's it for the last day. Well, that's too bad. I had ordered cake for everybody. Mm -hmm. And and a lot of soda. Cake and soda. All right. So How are you guys feeling? How is everything going? And do you guys, did you guys have any questions in regards to any of the material that you guys saw on the platform? Like, was there anything that, that caught your attention that you might have some questions about, especially with this last, well, I would say the, the first three sections really focused on conversation, right? And then four and fifth, they started to kind of touch back on different materials from before. Was there anything there that caught your attention or that you guys wanted to kind of just go over Um, I, I have a question out of this, uh, the, the, out of the platform, and um, um, does insofar course uh, ha have um, a conversation club or something like that? You can you can practice your English, um, having more conversations. You know. Uh... I don't think Insaforb as a company has it. I do believe that some of the groups in WhatsApp, like they, they made their own little groups in order for everybody to kind of have like conversations. But other than that, I, I, I really, I haven't heard of anything in terms oh. of, you know, like, I, but I, you know, that's a nice idea though, a little conversation. You know, come in and just you know start talking to people. That should you know that should be a thing. I I think that it could be um, it could be a great idea to to have a conversation with with our with our mates so we can practice all the things that we have learned during the course. 
Right. I, I completely agree with that. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, well, since since you guys haven't brought anything up, uh, I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about pronunciation, because in your next courses, uh, that's going to be like a, you know, like a big thing. So um, let me see here. I have a little... I, well, I have a couple of exercises that we can do real quick, and then we can have our final conversation, right, and then see how that goes. Uh, but I wanted to show you guys this first. So let me go ahead and show you guys. Okay, with uh, when we talk about conversation, okay, the reason we ask you to do that is because you have to be able to share ideas, you have to be able to talk to a person and react. Um, uh, there's people that use sarcasm a lot, right? And then you have to be able to react to that in, in the correct way because sarcasm can be bad or sar sarcasm can be good. Um, if you don't know how to react to it, it, it might end up bad anyways, right? So we want to make sure that we do react well to that. Um, that's why we kind of have you guys do the conversation exercises and because the more you sound these words out, the better it will be for you, okay? So now with that being said, I, I wanna share with you guys uh, some exercises that I think you guys can really take advantage of. I don't think we need you know, any voices for this one. Okay, are you guys able to see my presentation? Yes. yes. Yeah. Okay. So this one, the, the, so this is for my advanced classes. And this is some of the things that we kind of go over before we start to do our practices. All right. Um, so in terms of, let's say, let's say we were to have like a little list of things that you need. Um, well, when we talk about conversation, we are listening to how you pronounce. So pronunciation pronunciation is important. Let me go ahead and put it over here. And so when you are involved with pronunciation, there, there's a few things that you have to think about. What does pronunciation actually really mean? Let me see if I have it on here. Let me see if I don't know. I don't know if I have like the complete because I, I chopped them up from time to time. But I have a couple of things. Yeah, so there's some here that can help. Okay. So with pronunciation, there are specifics that we look for. And the specifics are the stress. How you are stressing your syllables word stressing there's also phrase stressing there's also pronunciation of the letters and that's called enunciation so pronunciation enunciation and phrase stress phrase stress word stress phrase stress all right and so kind of like a quick review how do you know when to stress a syllable? Now, why is this important? Well, it's important because if you don't use the correct stress, you might be saying the wrong thing, okay? It's a little bit easier, uh, I would say, with phrasal verbs and particles because not too many people are, are like really keen on listening to that. But but it does work out. I want you guys to look at these words. Look at the words and try to sound them out. All right. So some of these are or could be considered compound words. And you guys, we're gonna see them again later on. 
But as you guys can see with the phrasal verbs, what you see is that they're split into two. There's actually two words that are connected, right? Fall apart, break down, break in. And so when you are talking, it's actually one long word. However, the stress has to be in the correct portion of that word. And so when you guys are using it or when you guys are using verbs, Remember that verbs get the second portion, stressed. If you guys are using nouns, then the first portion gets the stress. Get away, right? Get away. So it has to have like a little bit more volume than the rest. Did you get away? Right? And then keep that in mind when you use it. Particles have the same rule as the verbs. Set up, do over, leave out. So it's the first portion and then the second portion gets the stress, okay? And so people listen to that because when you guys are giving your ideas, you're using all of these words and the words have to be stressed correctly, okay? Now, so these are examples of phrasal verbs or compound words as well because they fit the same description. And so we're gonna kind of go over, the, that was the phrasal verb exercises. We, we really don't need those at this time. And we go all the way into, well, I think the infinitives, we already kind of saw them a little bit. And here you go, okay? So we were discussing about stress. Stressing on compound words. If you guys are using compound words that are as verbs, who gets the stress? Where do we put the stress? Do you guys remember that? The first, all right. So now you take that rule and you apply it to regular words. Okay, because it's going to work the same thing. We are going to have verbs and we are going to have nouns and we're going to have adjectives. Now, it's a little bit different when we start using just the words that we're using. All right, because words usually just have a number of letters and those letters get split up into sounds and each of the sound becomes a syllable. If you guys want to look at it that way. Okay. So now we have words with one sound, like cat, dog, room, cheese. Can you guys think of any more words that have one sound only? Take the examples that I gave you, cheese dog, cat. I really like one syllable words. You know why I like them? Eat, that's a good one, yeah. Blue. The color blue. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, that's it, that'll work. All right, I like the syllables because you don't have to worry about mispronouncing it. There's no way you can mess up on cheese. Can you? I don't think you guys can. It's really easy, right? When you say dog, I bet everybody say dog. See how it sounds, dog. How about cat? cat. Hello, Diana. Welcome. Hello, Maria Ernestina. Welcome. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening, teacher. Hello. Thank hello. You. No problemo. No, you know, that would be a good idea. If it doesn't mess up the audio, I think you guys, you guys could do it. 
It's totally up to you guys. My camera's on. I have nothing to hide behind, you know, the universe. Y nada, que hay todo un montón de fotos y calendario, bro. So I'm, I'm thinking that we could do it, right? As a last goodbye, before we go, everybody has to get their camera so that we can take a little screenshot and I can save it and put it on my wall as a reminder y llorar con ustedes todas las noches. <laughs> todas las noches. <laughs> All right. ¿Verdad? Ay, esta clase, qué feitos. No, mentira, 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 mentira. All right, so we're, 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 we're kind of reviewing. Así van a salir. All right, we're kind of reviewing. We're, we're doing a quick review of pronunciation and what is it that they look for when pronouncing. Hopefully, we can get to the point where I can where I can show you guys how the linking works as well, because that's also really important. So right now we are doing pronunciation. And to be more exact, we are working on word stress. All right. Okay. So whenever you guys hear a word, especially one that is a little bit longer, right? The longer the word, I want you guys to start thinking already, oh my God, that's going to be a lot of sounds. And that means that it's going to be a lot of syllables. And that means that I have to know where to stress. Now, what do we mean by stress? Why do we bring it up? And what do we want to hear? Now, there's two ways that you guys can use stress. There is the volume. And there is also how long you make the sound. All right. Now, with time, I like to use volume to stress something. I, w I went to the market, right? I want to stress out something. I, I increase my volume. It doesn't have to be like that. You guys can work your own way of stressing a syllable. And it could be by making a long sound or making short sounds. So what does that mean? Well, it means that on certain syllables, the sound is going to be very, very short. And on others, it's going to be a little bit longer. And then that's how you are going to be able to stress the different syllables. Now, it's very important that you guys stress correctly because there are words that are spelled out the same but mean different things. And I think you guys have already seen these before. I just want to just kind of quickly go over it. And I'll show you the different types of words that we have. So let's say that we use this quick word. Well, wait, wait, hold on. I'm sorry. I think I'm going to go a little bit, right? Okay. Syllables are sounds. How many sounds a word has is what's going to help you determine where you put the stress. And so we have words that have one sound. We said cheese, for example. One sound. Cheese, dog, cat. You can't go wrong with those. There's words that have two sounds. If the word has only one sound, that means it only has one syllable And the best news is you don't have to stress anything there. You just have to make sure you pronounce the word correctly, enunciate the word correctly with each of the letters. When you have a word with two sounds, for example, chicken, chick n, chick n is two different sounds. Chick 
is one and then n. Now, when you actually pronounce it, you spell it chicken and then you pronounce it like an in chicken, chicken. Ding, ding, chicken dinner. No, como es? Como ring, ring, chicken dinner. No, tampoco. Chicken. Okay. All right. I'm going to come back to this slide, but I want to, I want you guys to take a look at some other words that we have. And of course, my favorite word of all, banana. Why is it that the gringos say banana? All right, banana. Hey, can you get me the banana? I like this one because it's so easy, right? Syllable one, ba, very short. As short as you can get it, ba. Ba, ya voy, ba, right? The second syllable is long. And this one, you have to, you, if you, to make it work, it has to sound long. Nah. Nah. And then you come back to the third syllable, which is na. And so in spoken English, get me my banana and then na, na. Can I get a banana? Na. Can I have a banana? No. It sounds weird when you do it slow, but when you say it fast, it makes sense. Banana. Hey, can I get the banana? You guys hear the <laughs> the N, A, and the A? Uh, banana. 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 How do you guys say banana? La banana. El guineo. El guineo. <laughs> Do you guys know where the word guineo comes from? No. No. Oh, bananas, when they first came to El Salvador, they came from a they came from a place called New Guinea. I can't even I don't even know how to spell it. I'm gonna just throw whatever. Would be in Guinea. Right. Right. So and so, you know, they would bring them off the boats and everybody started calling them guineos, guineo, guineo, because they were from New Guinea. Huh? Ah, que tal, el teacher les enseñó algo. Oh, yeah. <laughs> cuidado, cuidado. Sabemos kung fu. <laughs> banana, banana. Now, banana. you can't go wrong with banana in terms of spend. <laughs> there we go, Ivan. You can't go wrong with banana. Because even if you say it wrong, it's still, people know what it is. Nah. <laughs> well, if you say it like that, it, it might take a little bit more time. But banana, banana, it, it's still the same thing, right? Unless you say guineo, then somebody might ask you, what, what is that? Um, because different countries have different names for it. Uh, I believe Venezuela uses cambur. I think that, one, that one's a little bit different, right? So banana. Now. Think of us trying to put that long, that long sound on different words. So, for example, let's use the nouns. Remember the rule. Nouns, you stress the first syllable. Pero, teacher, ¿cómo sé yo cuántas sílabas o qué sílaba? Well, remember the sounds. So let's use this one, project. Pro, because uh, we have to roll the R's, pro. And you could say it like that. You could say pro and then lower the volume, Project. Pro, Project. ¿Estamos bien hasta acá? All right, all right. So then... Same thing. Remember, I use volume. I say pro. I, 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 I increase my, my volume. Project. But you can make it with just having the longer sound. Project. Right? Project. <laughs> or object. Object. Now. Object. So now, so now let's let's look at these, and so that you guys work on the difference, right? If I tell you I'm working on a project, what am I doing? 
I'm working on a project. You have a, a job. I have a job. There we go. Okay. What if I say, I need to project. What do I need to do? I got an ambition in something. Project. It could be yeah. it could be that you're that you want to talk about an idea and you're gonna write it or you're gonna you're going to draw it or you are going to show it on a screen. Project, project the screen. There we go, right? So we have project and we have project. They are spelled out the same. But if you guys don't put the stress in the correct syllable, somebody might might get the wrong idea. Okay. okay? So with that, how can I identify the syllables? Think of the sounds, right? Present. How many sounds did you hear? Present. Two. Two. Okay. Export. How many? Two. Two. Okay. All right. China. Two. Two. All right. Very easy, right? Very easy. Now, once you learn to identify the sounds, once you have done that, you can identify the syllables. If it has two sounds, that means that it has two syllables. The second portion to that is identifying if it's a noun an adjective or a verb because based on that is where you are going to be 100% sure where the stress is going to land okay it's not the same thing when you say present to you saying present spelled out the same way, but they mean two different things, okay? Export and export, spelled out the same, but they mean two different things. All right, so now, it's easy when you have small words, and the most words that are used usually only have two syllables, okay? That's good for you guys. But what happens if you have more than that? Well, you can do the exercises yourself and break that word into the different sounds that it makes. For example, for example, conversation. How many sounds did you hear? Conversation, conversation. Four. Four. So how many syllables? Four. Four. So now here's the tricky part to this, right? Where do I put the stress? In the ver or the sa? Sa. I was saying ver. Conversation versus conversation. What do you guys think? Conversation. Ah, the sa, the, I think the sa is, sounds yeah, a little yes. bit louder. Yeah. But now, you can either guess or you can know for a fact. So there's a rule to this. There's a rule that's very easy that I'm going to teach you right now. I hope I have it here. <laughs> yes, I do. I do have it. Here we go. Okay. Let's use instalación. Okay. So what are the rules? We have different rules when the words get too long. If the word is too long, don't worry about it. All you have to do is look at how the word ends. If it ends with an IC, right? All you have to think about is, okay, I am going to put the stress 
on the second to last. That is the rule. If you guys have a word that ends in IC, like graphic, graphic. If you guys have a word that ends with an IC, like geographic, or geologic, then the stress goes on the second to last. If you have words that end with scion or tion, like revelation or television, now television is tricky because sometimes they put the stress on the last portion Sometimes they put the stress on the VI, which is the second. So now the correct way would be the VI. Television. Revelation. Now, the words can get as long as they want to get. And it should still be no problem for you. Because if the word ends with CY, TY, PHY, GY, Imagine you guys are reading or having to say a word like dependability. How many sounds are there? How many sounds? Dependability. Oh my goodness, that's a lot of sounds, five, right? Five, five, the, six, five, two, dependability. Six. Six. All right. If you said five, it's okay, right? Now, dependability, right? Six. If you get the six, six right. if you get the six, yes, right. right, is the third to last. So whenever you guys get a word that ends with CY, TY, PHY, GY, it is going to be the third from last. So we have TY, LI, and BI, that is the third. So that's where I'm going to put the stress. Depend, y aquí va el grito, va. Ability, dependability. Dependability. Okay. Photography. Whenever you guys find this and you don't know where to put the stress, remember, right? Graphy. Photography. Third. The two. Photography. For the profession, the same. For the profession. Well, remember that when you say photographer, how many, how many do we have? And it doesn't end, it doesn't, it, that one ends with ER. So I think there's a rule for that one as well. Photographer. Photographer. So that's four, right? All right. Photography, third. Always the third. Okay. What if the word ends with AL? Like critical. Same thing. Third from last third from last critical critical Cri critical geo geological 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 all right so whenever you guys get to these really big words I want you guys to think about how many sounds it makes because you actually need to kind of keep track of that. And then based on how they end, that's where you're going to put the stress. And so there's a little bit more, right? There's the compound words that also have their own rule. It depends on whether you're using nouns, adjectives, and verbs, which is the first slide that we saw. Blackbird, if it's a noun, then it's the first portion, right? If it's an adjective, it goes on the second portion of the word. Bad tempered, old fashioned. And that's pretty much how you continue with that. So remember the stress, where do we put the stress? All right, now there's a few more, there's a lot of rules, right? But these you guys can eventually with time, you guys will be able to see them and learn them, right? How does the word change? What I wanted to also cover with pronunciation for us, is rhythm. You guys are going to like this one. Have you guys ever done rhythm exercises? No. And what is the rhythm that we should have? Okay. 
All right. So the rhythm to follow, I want you guys to look at these little dots. Little dot, big dot, little dot, big dot, little dot, big dot, little dot. So in pronunciation in phrases, you guys get to use words, content words, and function words. Okay? Content words are the big ones that you see. Like, for example, bot. Function words are the little ones that you sometimes don't see, like a or on. Okay? How does the rhythm rule work? On a content word, you are going to stress. And on a function word, you are going to drop the stress. How does that sound? I bought a car on Tuesday. Sounds funny, huh? Sounds weird. But now if you say it fast, I bought a car on Tuesday. What did you do? I bought a car on Tuesday. I bought a car on Tuesday. I bought a car on Tuesday. And that is the rhythm that you will follow on your conversations. Little dot, big dot, little dot, big dot, little dot, big dot, little dot. That's how you follow it. That's how you do it. And that's how you use it in pronunciation. Okay. Who wants to try reading this with the dots? I bought a car on Tuesday. Right? What did you do? I bought a car on Tuesday. I bought a car on Tuesday. Who would like to try it? Who would like to try it? Volunteers. Hello, hello. Glenda, 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 let's do it. Uh, I bought a car on Tuesday. Nice. There we go, Glenda. There we go. Now, Thank you. Glenda, it has to be like that for everything that you do. And I know that right now it sounds funny because we're not accustomed to it, but that's how it sounds. That's how you're supposed to talk. You have to bring down your voice and bring it up and bring it down and bring it up and bring it down and bring it up. And then so it, it, it almost feels like you're, you know, like you're having an anxiety attack. But that's how English is. Okay. That's how everybody has a conversation, uses rhythm and stressing. I bought a car on Tuesday to make it sound like we're following a certain pattern, which we are, okay? All right, let's try another one. Ah, look at this one. Look at little dot, big dot, little dot, big dot, little dot. Little dot, big dot. Who wants to try this one? Mm -hmm. Ivan, you want to try it or Guy? Who said it right there? Go ahead, Ivan. Try it. Okay, you'll go first. Then you'll go then. <laughs> okay, I took a bus to the park. That's it. That's it, you got it, right? And then so say it a little bit faster, Ivan. I took a bus to the park. Okay, what did you do yesterday, Ivan? I took a bus to the park. There we go. I took a bus to the park, like that, like that. I took a bus to the park. I took a bus to the park. Now, we're still living off the linking. We haven't done any linking yet. And when we start doing the linking, all of this is going to disappear, right? The way it sounds here. Because it's not, remember what I told you guys about tuka? Well, no, I don't think I mentioned it, right? So instead of you saying took a, you say it differently. You say tuka de una sola vez. Or two and the, you put them together. And then so it sounds a little bit different once you do that. 
once you get the rhythm and the linking and you put those together, I I took a I took a bus to the park. I took a bus to the park. And it sounds fantastic. Right? Okay. I have a couple more here. I have a couple more. Don't worry, guys. I got you. I got you. You guys. I got you. Okay. Josh is reading a newspaper article. This one's a little bit different, right? However, if you pay attention to the dots, big dot, little dot, big dot, little dot, little dot, big dot, little dot, little dot, big dot, little dot, little dot. The little pattern. They all have patterns. Okay. Give it a look for a couple of minutes and let's see who wants to volunteer in reading that one. Who wants to read that one? All right. Who wants to try it out? Yeah. Oi, Tigi. Oi, Tigi. Yeah, let me be the first. All right. Perhaps all right, there's another meet. Let's for try the second. Let's... Okay. Uh, I'll build a fire in the fireplace. Fireplace. I'm going to repeat it because I repeat it one more time. Yeah. I'll build a fire in the fireplace. I'll build a fire in the fireplace, right? I'll build a fire in the fireplace. I'll build a fire in the fireplace. Little dot, big dot, little dot, big dot, little dot, little dot, big dot, little dot. I'll build a fire in the fireplace. All right. Try the next one, Guy. Try the next one. Try the one with Josh. Josh is reading a newspaper article. All right. What is Josh doing? Reading a newspaper article. Okay. All right. So whenever you guys think about what you're going to say, I want you guys to think of this little, of the little dots, right? And you can see here that all the important words get a little bit of a push, like a name of a person, Josh, Josh, and then you lower your volume again is, and then reading, reading a newspaper, article josh is reading a newspaper article and so there's little levels of volume that will increase and move okay all right so let me go ahead and show you guys a quick little description of well examples right content words and function words. I want you guys to think of content words of all the big ones. Everything that you put in a sentence that describes something and that's a little bit bigger, right? Now, the function words are the really small ones. A, on, to. Sometimes you can even, you know, not pronounce those and somebody will still get the message. All right? Now, here we go. Quick little role play. Quick little role play. I want you guys to focus on the darker letter. And I want you guys to do a quick boost of volume in those letters. Okay. So I appre right, appreciate you coming down here, Mrs. Parr. And then you continue. All right. Who wants to try this one out? 
remember, we need volume in the darker words. Volunteers, volunteers. Me, me teacher. Me. A ver, all right. And one more volunteer. So I'll tell you, I'll tell you, Mar Maria Ernestina, you can be Helen. Okay. All right. Who wants to be the principal? I can. All right, Ivan, you're the principal. And I'm going to be Dash. Look at look at the big part for Dash. Oh. <laughs> All right. All right, everybody ready? Principal, you ready? What about Helen? Uh, Helen is Maria Ernestina. And Bernie? Oh, where's Bernie? That's right. Who's going to get Bernie? Who wants to do Bernie? Who wants to do Bernie? I already have Dash, so we need a Bernie. I'll trade. I'll be <laughs> Diana. Diana, who do you want to be? Bernie. Bernie. <laughs> All right, let's do it. Let's do it. All right, here we go. Principal, Helen, Bernie, Dash. Everybody ready? Tres, dos, uno. I appreciate you coming down here, Miss Parr. What is about? Has Dash done something wrong? He is disruptive influence and he openly mocks me, mocks me in front of the class. He says, I know it's you. He puts thumbtacks on my stool. You saw him do this? Well, not really, no, actually not. Oh, then how do you know, you know this what him? I hear a, a camera, yeah, and this time I've got him. Oh, do you guys know where this is from? What movie? No. No, from the Incredibles. Incredibles. <laughs> when he goes to the principal, the principal's office, so remember, they're really upset. Everybody's really upset. The teacher is like really, really upset. All right. So the idea behind this role play is for you guys, whenever you guys are having a conversation, your feelings have a big part in what you're saying. If you're upset, if you're angry, if you're happy, all of that has influence in what you're saying. So, right, my recommendation to you guys is try not to be angry whenever you guys have a conversation, right? Because Bernie is absolutely so angry in this short, right? And you could really, really tell that he's angry because he really puts emphasis on some things, right? He's a disruptive influence and he openly mocks me in front of the class. He really voices it out. Okay, all right. So remember pronunciation, guys. In your in your coming up classes, remember when you're about to say something, right? Remember emphasis on the big words, volume lower on the little ones. Okay. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is it. Oh, no vayan a llorar. No vayan a llorar. Yo me prometí que no iba a llorar. Bah, prometí que no iba a llorar nada. No llore, teacher, que ahora llegó la nave a Marte. Trato, trato de no hacerlo, trato de no hacerlo. All right. Teacher. Um, yes. Para la próxima clase ya no tiene que poner ese planeta Tierra, tiene que poner a Marte atrás. I, I think I am going to have to do that. I will, I will change it. But you know what? It's really hard to get it to work. Like they make it sound so easy, but it's actually, it's kind of hard. El mostachito, Ivan. <laughs> Wait, let me get it. Okay. ustedes? There you go. Did, did you guys hear about the el abogado que llegó con el juez y se puso un filtro de un gatito? Yeah. Have you guys seen that one? You guys, you guys can look it up. It's so funny porque el juez le dice, mire, usted tiene un filtro. Y le dice el señor, sí, yo sé, pero no lo puedo quitar. Y así está el gatito y el gatito habla y todo. It's, it's really funny. All right, everybody. Pleasure being with you guys. Les deseo lo mejor siempre. Namaste, everybody. Lo, lo voy a premiar con dos minutos. 
Thank you. Thank you, teacher. Take care, everybody. Good having you in class. Yes. Good night. Good night, everybody. Good night. It was a pleasure. Good night. Thank you, teacher. My pleasure. My pleasure. Take care, everybody. See you guys on the next round.